Hello and welcome to the Tech Certified Podcast. In this episode, let's talk about how to get into tech. I interviewed two well-known tech professionals and asked them to share their insight on how to enter this industry. They shared some great views and I want to share that with you today. But before we get into that, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're currently looking for a role in tech, this is a free three-step guide to getting a job in tech. Just click the link in the description to get the guide now. Without further ado, let's talk to our guests. Now, this is Jesse. Jesse is an award-winning software engineer who works for a cybersecurity firm. Not just that, but she is also a podcast host who is incredibly passionate about helping minorities in the tech space. Now, I asked Jesse, what are the key three things to help someone get their role in tech? And here's what she said. So the first of them, I think, would be, especially in this job market, have patience. Um, I also remember at the time that I came up into this role, there was so much of the how I became a software engineer in 30 days and landed my first role, you know, all of that stuff. There's so much comparison. And I know so many people that were like just on the brink of giving up and then they got a role a year into their search. So that'd be my first thing is like be patient and yeah, persevere. Secondly, I think leverage the potential of being able to move internally. I think if you are entry level and you're looking for that first technical role, maybe go for a technical support position or a customer success position and get your foot in the door with a tech company. Have the opportunity to prove yourself that you are um, a reliable, hardworking, fast learner. And then it will be so much more likely that an employer will take the risk because ultimately they're taking a risk with a junior that they don't have when they take a mid-level or senior, which is, I don't know if this career is for me yet. I don't know if I'm going to stick at it. At least if you've been somewhere internally before, you can kind of prove that, that you will, will stick around, that you, the grit to be able to to make that transition. And then finally, I'd say get involved with communities. Well, there are so many. Um, there are so many that are incredibly well connected. Like you don't know which community event you're going to go to where you meet the recruiter for the dream company who's hiring for your dream role and just having the opportunity to speak to them in a less formal setting in a place where they are there to support and encourage there are so many incredible opportunities with community have a look for um, in-person meetups if there are any near you now if you're on the journey of getting into tech these tips are not to be taken lightly Jessie's someone who speaks to a lot of people about getting into tech and thriving in that journey, so she knows what she's talking about. We'll hear more from her later in the video. Now, this is Dominic. And Dominic was able to secure a role in cybersecurity in the current job market. You know, the job market that everyone says is terrible and it's so hard to get jobs. Dominic was able to break through. And so I asked him about this. In such a difficult job market, how were you able to navigate and get that role? And is what he said. I would say the first thing is shift your mindset, right? Don't get too worked up on getting rejected from the job. At the end of the day, it's just a rejection. I'm pretty sure that you've gone through way worse or things that were more traumatic. So don't get, you know, so worked up on an email that says, oh, you've been rejected. You're still a good person. You're still skilled. It just wasn't your time yet. And the next would be have a plan. I don't think the the spray approach of applying to a thousand jobs is the best. It may work for some people. It may not. But I definitely think you should have a plan first. Right. So figure out if you are going to be in cybersecurity, figure out like what sector, right? Do you want to be in, you know, cybersecurity for health? Do you want to be, do it for, you know, um, enterprise level? Do you want to do it for the private sector? Do you want to be in cybersecurity for within the government? And then start actually seeing, okay, what companies do I want to work for? Start actually going to their career pages, applying, and then, you know, actually coming up with a plan on how to, you know, do stuff, you know, track your jobs, make sure you actually see, what jobs you're applying to, reach out to people on LinkedIn, whether that's a recruiter, whether that's a somebody that's in your actual position, and just try to see if you can get a referral or see if like you can just get more insights onto where you want to work. And I always say it's about God's timing. You know, it's never going to be really on your timing, right? You may, you know, network with somebody that's a security analyst at Google and you're not ready yet. But then in eight months, you may have gotten a few search, your degree, and you can come back to that person. And the reason you're able to come back is because you built that, that relationship in the beginning and you didn't ask for, you know, something crazy. So I definitely say have a plan. Make sure you're methodical about your actual job search process and just change your mindset and, you know, everything will work out. Some great gems from Dominic and some valuable advice to be taken into your journey. Now, when speaking to Jessie and asking her about her advice on getting into tech, 
I was also super interested about why she was so passionate about helping people on this journey. And when I asked her about this, Here's what she said. I come from a low income single parent household. I didn't realize what was possible and available in terms of careers. I didn't have anybody teaching me about these roles and, and telling me what was achievable. And like I said earlier, like getting to university was my goal and that was it. I didn't have anything beyond that. Once I got into tech and I realized like some of the careers in tech, especially the technical roles, you don't necessarily, it's not based on who you know or or the, the kind of connections you have, where which is unlike other careers. So for me, kind of realizing that you have access to above average salary without necessarily um, the exclusivity that some higher paid roles have, it was a no brainer for me that like, why can't everybody use this as a way to, to better themselves? And then also from a tech consumption point of view, like there are so many incredible advancements happening in tech at the moment. But we've also seen the damage that can be done when the people building those things don't represent the people they are built for. Not only is it like a way for you to, to better your own life, but I really believe that we need a diversity of thought in the rooms that are built of the people that are building these things. For me, it feels like I've been the beneficiary of so many incredible community-led organizations like Coding Black Females, Code Bar, Black Valley. All of those things have provided me with resources without necessarily expecting anything back. And I feel like it's my kind of responsibility to be able to pass that on as well and, and help other people just the same way that I was helped. Now everyone on their journey has had someone who they've learned from and it's amazing that we have people like Jesse who expose this information to others who may not know so much about the tech space but see it as a space that they want to enter. All of us were once in that position where we didn't know much and didn't know where we would be and there were people that helped us along the way who provided certain pieces of information and nuggets and mentorship. Now, it was really interesting to hear about Dominic and his story and journey of getting to where he is now. Now, he's still quite early in his career, so it was even more interesting to hear this. Yeah, man, I like to say I have a very untraditional path into tech. I didn't go straight from high school to college and then get you know a degree and then enroll. I actually started my journey when I was in high school. So it was in my senior year, I was 17 years old and the typical 17 year old, right? Getting ready for my senior year. I was, you know, very athletic person at the time. So I'm trying to prepare for the basketball team, working out, doing track stuff. And I got introduced to somebody that would become my mentor. Shout out William Sims. And he kind of just told me about what cybersecurity is, because I know like in the movies, we always see it's just hacking, but it was a lot more to that. He broke it down for me. And what really got me hooked outside of like the salary part was that like, hey, if you take it serious, you can use it to create freedom abundance right you can get physical freedom financial freedom and you know whatever freedom that you wish so that's what hooked me from there he kind of took me under his wing i was able to help create a curriculum for his program i was able to do various resource lists and he allowed me to participate in his program so that internship is what got me my hands-on experience that's where i started i have some super big news so most recently it was at the end of november so i was actually working a little IT contract with a hospital for two weeks. And on the last day, a recruiter had called me from a company that I previously interviewed for, and I didn't even get the role at first. And they had called me saying like, hey, we loved your interview and we have more positionings open up for those analyst positions that you applied for. And we wanted to offer you a position. And of course, I took it on the spot. So I was able to land my first cybersecurity role and I'm a SOC analyst. So that was the most recent news that I've had. And it's definitely been overwhelming a little bit, but just blessed. A really interesting journey. And it was only right that we also heard about Jesse's journey as well. I was the first in my family to go to university. And so that was where my plan ended. That was the point I was working towards. So when I graduated, I was like, crap, I've not actually thought about this whole what happens afterwards part. And I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I went into teaching for a little while. So I really enjoyed teaching and I really enjoyed working with children. But there was a limit to what I could earn in that role without having a PGCE. Mm. And I was actually having to supplement. I was working in the school at the day and working at a bar in Croydon at nights and barely wow. making enough to live in London. Um, so I knew it was unsustainable for me working those kind of hours. And then I kind of just through Googling, using LinkedIn, found out about this London startup ecosystem. And I was actually reached out to by a recruiter to join um, the company I'm at now, CybeSafe, nearly six years ago now. Um, wow. And joined as in sales as a, as a sales development rep. And 
then after a little while moved into customer success and that was when I got exposure to the engineers like working with them right. on bugs and understanding what it was they did and I was really really lucky the engineers at the time did a little like introduction to python course for some of the other people in the business and that really was like the final thing for me to be like damn this is a really cool job I had no idea that it was this accessible and just with a few weeks of like learning in the evenings realized that it was the thing I wanted to commit to you got reached out by recruiters for this job at the beginning. How does that happen? Like, how do you position yourself to so, a point that you're getting reached out to? It was pure chance on my behalf. I was doing everything I could to optimize my CV, um, just the typical like graduate things of it. Right. And it really, really does work to kind of have your LinkedIn ready, have your stuff, have your profile set to open for work. There are certain roles and sales is a lot of them that are more entry level friendly for graduates and for people that are early on in their career. And so just being willing to do something that you've not necessarily done before. I had no cybersecurity experience, no sales experience, but it seemed like a really cool opportunity. And a lot of the time with these entry level roles, they're not necessarily looking for you to have that industry experience yet um, if you can prove yourself in those first few rounds of interviews and show that you're a quick learner you can get into that first role and that's really what opened the doors for me dominic is someone with a growing personal brand at such a young age like he's really early on in his journey but if you look at his linkedin he has like sixteen thousand followers but how does having loads of followers actually help you in your career I wanted to find out more about this from the man himself. And I would say it's definitely helped me so much. I feel like I think every interview I've ever had has came from LinkedIn. They, they always mention like, hey, I see your story. I see your post. I think you would be a good fit for this role. So definitely my personal brand has helped me with that. And then most recently when I was at a tech conference called GovTechCon, I'm the youngest person there. I'm 20 years old. I'm the youngest panelist. And I got people coming up to me saying like, yo, I see you on TikTok. I see you on LinkedIn. I follow, I've been following you for such and such. And like you inspire me. I love your content. Keep it up. So definitely seeing how much of an impact I've had on others in a positive way has definitely like increased my personal brand. And then I always try to be positive myself and always put that out there. I don't try to be negative or, you know, feed into any of that. And I feel like whatever mm. you get in, you, you know, you'll get out. As I mentioned before, Jesse is also a podcaster. She hosts a podcast called Glowing in Tech. Honestly, this is an incredible podcast, especially for minorities and women in tech. So definitely check that out. Subscribe to their channel, listen to their podcast. They featured so many incredible people and have so many gems. I've been running Glowing in Tech. We're just about to go into our third season now. The longer I've been in tech and seen the process of growing and scaling something, the more I've been really interested in starting something myself and also just becoming more and more aware of how much it takes for somebody to start something from scratch and take it to something profitable. It's been an amazing podcast for us to explore and speak to a lot of the black women who are doing incredible things in the tech space. So it's been a mix of talking to founders, software engineers, people in cybersecurity, um, and we've been lucky enough to, to be able to do it for a few seasons now and really looking forward to doing the next one. Make sure you follow both Jesse and Dominic. Their socials will be in the description below. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button to get this video out to more people. Drop a comment saying what you agree with or disagree with. If this video was helpful, then this video will be super helpful also.